or <laughs> I, I don't I don't know if he's an atheist or not. I I'm pretty sure. It doesn't really matter, but he is really outspoken about uh, Islam, okay. basically, and uh, and he's he's great. I mean, the things he says are, are great. I mean, he's not he's not a racist or a bigot, and I mean, it just it's just really clear. Everything he says is just very clear and straightforward and, and easy to understand. And yet, of course, everyone calls him everyone on the left, the, the far left. Yeah. <laughs> calls him a bigot, no racism, of course. Yeah, but but, uh, but that's. I think um, you know, I think we're just gonna have to get used to being called bigots and racists. Yeah, basically. <clears throat> uh, and that's fine. That's fine with me. I actually, uh, it's kind of a badge of honor. Uh, yeah, I I think when you're dealing with a a group of people like like not not Muslims, but people from certain areas of of the world. You know, like uh, like Afghanistan and you know pl places like that. Especially if they're involved in a religion that is known to be violent. You know, it's right. it's fine to be cautious. But with the with the Japanese system being so strict, I mean, they're not allowing you know like Americans and British and you know Canadians right. and and just normal people. You know, okay. not okay. not. Uh, you know, if if you if you want to, I, I can understand a little bit because they don't like the weeaboos to come in and shit like that. You know, because they're kind of <laughs> they're kind of annoying. You know, those kind of people. Yeah. You know, the people that like yeah. fantasize about their culture and stuff like that. Those people are a little bit annoying too. But when when you have somebody like me who lived here, who had two wives, has two kids, I have a 16-year-old and a 14-year-old son, and then I actually worked in Japan, I was car exporting, and I taught, and I had a school, and things like that, when you, when you, they have all my information from before when I lived here, they have my old visa, how many times I've been in and out, and you, you would think in those situations, if the same thing was done in America, they would allow you to come in, and they would probably give well, you, you a, a green so. card, yeah. you know, because, yeah. be, especially if you never did anything wrong, you know, I never did anything wrong where I got picked up by the police or anything like that, so they really have no reason in, in 11 years of me coming back and forth through Japan and living here a total of about six years of, well, seven years now, of doing anything. But they're very yeah. like hard ass on anybody for really no reason, you know, and it's kind of yeah, it's yeah. kind of annoying, you know. I mean, that's kind of that's one of the downfalls of of, of I think government actually yeah. is that it's very robotic. Um, yeah. Well, they're sort of it's like a vending it's like a vending machine. You know, you can't say well, you know, I, I, I I'm I'm each end you know short. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Or or you know, it, it, it's very robotic. Um, well, the problem is, is they're causing be. their own default because of that. They're all the problem that they're having with the elderly people and men not getting married and all this stuff. There's so many foreigners that want to marry Japanese women, and they're not right. going to be able to find because of the herbivore culture here. They're not going to be able to find husbands. But there's a lot of right. foreigners that would marry them, British guys and American guys and Mexican guys and anybody from foreign countries like the Japanese women, even if they're a chubby girl. They don't even care. <laughs> yeah. you know. So it's <laughs> going to be easy yeah, for yeah. them to find wives and become productive members of society, you know, outside yeah. of being teachers. You know, if they come yeah. to the country and they learn the language a little bit and then they decide to be an office worker or, or go to, into nursing or something like that. You know, they right. can they can actually help the country and put more money into the GDP. You know, if if they yeah. allow foreign more foreigners in, but if they continue to try to stifle their their productivity and only allow Japanese in the country and very mm -hmm. allow very few foreigners to come here, they're gonna they're gonna see their own population decline because of that. Oh, of course. Yeah, and it's already it's already declining. But uh, yeah, I mean, I I understand. I actually politically, I sort of sort of agree with the the far right a little bit in Japan. Um, uh, only because I think that they see a threat 
they're identifying it, they're calling it what it is. No, actually, mostly they're 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 sort of opposed to uh, foreign, like uh, like the Korean religions and Chinese religions. Yeah, <laughs> that's what, yeah, that's what they seem to be focused on. But that's not really the the problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The problem is is uh, Islamic. Exactly. They, they, they don't seem to be really focused on that yet, but maybe the government. Is. Yeah. Um, and and I think uh, you know there are a lot of um, European Muslims right now, and there are a lot of American Muslims. So I could understand on paper why they're being strict. Uh, yeah. But but like you said, I mean, and your, your history of Japan is fine. You, know, you have a lot of you. I mean, you you have what? Like you probably have like ten thousand. Dollars uh, invested into Nanking, probably, right? Um, I think from last I checked, I think I, I was able to get like fifteen thousand back. Yeah. They told yeah, me yeah, yeah. like if yeah. you if you leave within a year of you leaving, you can apply to actually get it back if you're a foreigner. Right. You have you know? to you have to prove that you live outside the country and whatnot. I, I, right now, I'm up to about seven thousand. Yeah. So, so I was assuming you were about twice that. Yeah, I'm. I'm probably. I've paid in maybe around forty-five or fifty thousand. But I was exporting cars for a long time in Japan, and I used to do like the the uh, Canada, Canada, or yeah, like Can Canada and uh, England and mostly Australia, and New Zealand. I used to export cars. Oh, okay. So I d I did that yeah. for a long time, and that's actually where I made most of my money at. So I paid oh. quite a bit in. And then I had people that were working for me, and I paid in for them as well. So, mm. yeah, I'm, I'm hoping I, I'm, I should. They said it won't take long, so they sent some stuff up to Tokyo. I sent a bunch of stuff up there, and and uh, that was on uh, uh, Friday last week. Mm. I think. Yeah. It was the eleventh. Uh, Friday. The sixteenth. It was the sixteenth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was the, la the, last the, week. That was last Wednesday. Yeah. 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 So uh, hopefully it won't take long. But he actually s sent all the paperwork to Tokyo on Friday. Mm. Last Friday. Well, so. good, good luck with that for sure. I mean, I, I I've taken pictures before of all the paperwork necessary to apply for a. Uh, a visa. Yeah. Um, the last time I applied for a visa, I was trying to change my marriage visa hmm. into a what is it called? I can't remember the name of it. Parent of a of a Japanese child, right? Mm -hmm. And I can't do that because technically my ex-wife is the the primary caregiver. Right. Right. Yeah. And, but I but I had I had I had, I had provided all this you know. Proof and information about how I'm, how much I'm paying her, and you know, these kinds of things, and it just wasn't enough, apparently. Yeah, yeah, well, I tried the same visa, thing. Yeah, so my marriage visa uh, expires in 2017. Okay. But um, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of a gray area. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, because I'm I'm divorced, so I mean, you would think that the the marriage visa goes away when you get divorced, but it kind of doesn't. No, if you have um, your visa, it goes until the end of that visa, and then after that, you have to find out what you're going to do. Exactly. Yeah. You know? yeah. And uh, and I mean to the point that I, I I think I think you know Japan wants people to be here and be to be productive and and to work and and you know pay money to Nanking and and you know, Zai and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um. So they're not going to kick uh, an American out of the country who's working. Right. They're not going to do that. Hey, right. If I was Nigerian, maybe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and again, yeah. that's not racist. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's yeah. Just, that's just the way it is. Right? Yeah. Well, I, I have a friend, he's actually from Chicago, and he he, oh, yeah. he has actually got caught with uh, a joint in his in his uh, ashtray in his vehicle, and he was, oh. he, he was uh, put in jail, I think, for six months or a year or something like that in a Japanese jail. And he's got kids here. He's been married like twice. He's lived in Japan for 20 years. He used to be a Navy guy, and he's still he's still here. And he's been in wow. he's been in trouble with the police quite a few times. 
you know, mm. and he's still in Japan, and it and it, it and he's and he's black, and it it makes me kind of uh, wonder why they're so hard on some people and they don't really give a shit about other people. But he speaks really good Japanese, and he does a lot of like business courses and stuff like that. Um, and yeah. and he he's been here so long. He's just one of those people that's very good at Japanese, you know, because he's been here over twenty years. He came yeah. here the first time in like nineteen ninety two or something like that. Right. You know. Yeah. Well, I yeah, I mean I think I mean I I'm actually surprised that they gave him six months in jail or did he say six months or a year. I think I I forget what he said, but he had, he had actually just got out like not too long ago. He's been out for like a that, year or two. That's pretty rare, I think. Yeah. Uh, to 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 go to jail in Japan and then get out and stay in the country. Exactly. Uh, Especially yeah. if you're a foreigner. Yeah. Especially for a drug yeah. offense. You know. Yeah. 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 Cause he, but it, it wasn't like a lot of drugs. He just had like one joint. A police officer right. pulled him over in his car or something, and he had one joint. You know. And they but he, yeah. Just a buff, you know, just a roach. Yeah. And so they, you know, which kind of makes you wonder. But of course, police are gonna think because you're a foreigner, you're probably here doing drugs and selling drugs. And, you know. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah, they 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 have they jumped all these conclusions, and that's part of the reason why it's hard for foreigners to come into the country, because they have all these basically conclusions that they come to about foreigners, you know. Right. That. Which which you know not, not all the conclusions are wrong. I mean, it's it's okay to be cautious. Again, yeah. But, uh, but, but you yeah, have to I mean, think like that, that, who you're who you're talking about. You know, I mean, if you have somebody that right. comes to Japan that that went to school in America and they were they put on their visa that they went to like Yale, you know, and they learned like English and they studied law, and then now they're in Japan teaching English, and then you're cautious about bringing them in because they could be dealing drugs. It's like right. you gotta <laughs> use your brain a little bit, you know. It's like yeah, well, they yeah. they don't they don't have like a rational reasoning for like why why would you think something like that, you know? It's like. Right. Most people would look at that and go like, wow, he's like very well educated and he's probably a really cool person, you know, and they mm -hmm. don't think that way. They're just like, oh, he's a foreigner. He's probably going to, you know, beat somebody up and he's a drug dealer. And it's like, right. no, you know, you, that's try to try to think about if he was from Compton, you know, <laughs> yeah. and he's a and yeah. he did and he never graduated high school, you know, or something well, like yeah, that. I then you want to think like maybe I shouldn't allow that person into the country. You know, right. but when they're college educated and they come from a decent college, and you know, I don't even care if they're white, black, or Asian, or whatever. If they're from America or Canada or whatever, if they're well educated and they're coming into your country, they you should let them in. You know, especially with the with the way they're having problems with the herbivore men and the 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 they need more people in the country, or they're going to screw themselves in the ass. You know, so yeah, they basically. they need yeah. they need people here whether they're Japanese yeah. or not, but they have this weird idea that they want to keep it Japanese. You know, they want to keep as... They don't want the population to get, like, diluted to where it's kind of like America, where you can't really see who Japanese people are anymore. They're all mix, you know? Right. And I think they worry about something like that happening. But because of that, they're getting this, this culture of old people where the, the country is, like, two-thirds old people because of that yeah you know yeah and i and i mean like uh adult diapers outsell children baby diapers yeah you know? yeah like in japan yeah well they <laughs> have that. That they have a, a two to one death rate and they have had for like over 10 years now to where yeah. like more people die than are born twice as many people die than are born every year in Japan, right. you know, and that's right. the problem. You, they have a below replenishment rate right now, and it's been like that for years. It's been going down since 1976, but this is killing the country off, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a mess. Um, I mean, I, I, I can sort of sympathize with them wanting to keep, yeah, Japan, you know, Japanese. Yeah, I'm kind of because I mean I I you know I've only lived in, in in America and Japan, but I can say with a fair amount of confidence that Japan's culture is very homogenous. Yeah, 
and and, and it sort of sort of it pivots on everyone sort of doing the same thing exactly and thinking the same way yeah and and they and, think and it's if, a good if there's way enough people that don't think like that the society will just topple yeah it'll just fall down basically well their and their idea of what their society should be will topple you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah and, and it's an um, illusion, I believe. It's more of an illusion. They have this idea of what Japanese society is that's really a grandiose idea, and it's not really yeah. something that's true, but they they have this idea of how they, how awesome it is, and it's really not. Right. It's actually very destructive, you know. I've done a lot of yeah, I've yeah. done a lot of videos on the Japanese herbivore culture and the men, the drinking culture and you know oh, yeah. all this kind of stuff that goes on in Japan and a lot of this stuff they believe is is good and it's good parts of their culture but it's actually very destructive and it's not good oh, yeah. parts you know it's not very good I, I, I don't I don't disagree with any of that I yeah I, I think yeah yeah I mean um yeah I mean I think the main problem with Japanese culture sort of stems from um, the business culture yeah yeah. It really it really starts there. I yeah. Think. Um, I mean everything like Tatemai and you know like the, the way you're supposed to act in, in public and whatnot. That's not actually that. There's no problem with that. You know, having yeah. these you know kegel or tame with your, your relatives and stuff like that. That's all fine. It's, it's annoying, but it's, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. Um, it really stems from like a, a, a sort of a an unwarranted loyalty to your company. Yeah. The company you work for. Right. Yeah, that, that's, exactly. I think that's really where it starts from. Um, I mean I my, most of my coworkers at my company, they just you would think they were cult members. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. They're just so in love with the company. Yeah, it's very I'm sad. Like, I'm like, are you crazy? Yeah. <laughs> Especially when it's like a company that's not really that important. You know, it's not really exactly. anything great. You know, maybe it's like like something silly like I worked for a place um, called Sugei Diamond and it was like a, a place that we cut down buildings with diamond uh, rot, like wire and all this stuff and I was I was just going around cutting holes in walls we had like I had like a drill and we would cut holes in walls after they built a building for wires and tubings and stuff like that and the guys that worked for them were it was just a tiny little company I mean the 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 building was the building that the company was in was smaller than the house I'm in right now, and they you would have thought they worked for some huge you know NTT you know company and like it was awesome mm -hmm. and they acted like it was like a really big deal and I was like oh, yeah. you know it's like we just cut holes in walls dude what the fuck yeah. you know yeah 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 you know it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. they act like it's like well, a really like big thing yeah they they uh, a lot of my coworkers like I don't know they just. They almost like run around the the, the company like like trying to like uh, it's it's almost like what, what we say what we say we call brown nosing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. just brown nosing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, you you don't you don't know that that I, everyone should know that you know, what you what you're doing. Yeah. 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 Well, so, in yeah, Japan, it's part of the yeah. culture. It's like the culture. If the person is even one hour older than you the culture is brown nosing that's the thing that that's the thing that's funny about it. i think that's what they worry about like if more foreigners came in they would lose that part of their culture and it's kind of like yeah. a, a false uh like a like a false thing where people are pretending that they that they really think you're awesome and you're great and all this stuff when you're really not and i think they right. really worry about losing that part of their culture that people will will uh more foreigners that come in, we just don't do that. You know, respect is earned, right. not given. And in Japan, exactly. it's just given. You know, even if the guy's a total dick, you know, you still have to just, like, be nice to him, you know, because he's exactly. older than you, you know. And, and yep. yeah, and I, I think I think that part of the culture will die off the more foreigners that come in. Because if you hire some foreigners in your company, like nursing or something like that, and you have, like, half of the staff being nurses, are foreigners they're not going to do that you know right they're not going to right, right. they're not going to come in in the morning and do their morning calisthenics you know <laughs> all that stupid shit yeah you know all that stupid shit that they do 
oh my god, no, for real, like, <clears throat> my company does Raggio Taiso every day Yeah. at 3.30 yeah. in the afternoon. Yeah, it's annoying. I swear to god, it's fucking retarded. Like, yeah, the, they, they act like little kids, but they're so, like, cultish. Yeah. It's such, like, cult status. So retarded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, uh, before we do Raggio Taiso, we do, like, a stretching routine. Yeah. But, like, I don't, I don't do it. <laughs> I yeah. keep my headphones on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, and everybody's, like, doing the stretching, like, you know. Yeah. The way my shoe, you know. Yeah. Kind of stuff, you know. It's, it's, it, oh, it's so ridiculous. Yeah, and they, I, I think. They still use the same tape. The tape that they've used yeah. is, like, from 1940, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, how how weird is that? Like, yeah, like there's one exercise routine in this country. Yeah, one. Well, that's how it is with everything. <laughs> I've noticed. I, I do a lot of like uh, vehicles. Like, I do a lot of painting and car repair and stuff like that. And I've worked yeah. for a lot of companies over the time that I've been here, doing like auto body and uh, and uh, stuff like that. And when I work for these companies, they have these places that they send them to, like colleges, and they have like in America, each college you would go to, each college would have a different guy that's learned different things over his career, and he would teach you his style or whatever, you know, and, and some basic skills. But in Japan, it's like standard. There's a standard, and everybody learns yeah. the same thing. So when you go to these places and you start doing body work or you start doing something, they're like, oh, no, that's not the way you do it. And, right. and they try to get you to do it their way because their way is not only the best way, but it's the only way. It's the only way. That's, yeah. That's, 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 you're right, it's the only way. Yeah, um, and that's I've that's fucked been... up. You know, that's a fucked up thing, because especially with body and paint and car work and stuff like that, it only matters the outcome. How does it look when right. it's done? Oh, and that's, that's the thing with, with anything. Yeah. It's like, it matters what it what the outcome is, not how it got there. And there's no, that there's that millions of ways that. to get there. And they right, think there's right. only one road. There's many ways that people do everything. Writing a book, right. you know, being right. in a business, doing everything. There's millions of ways to get to the end. And they think, no, 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 there's only one way, our way. And our way is the only well, way, you, uh, you know. And you really hit, you really hit on the, uh, the, 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 the problem of uh, the way Japanese people think is they're, they're uh, too focused on the process and not the outcome. Yeah. So they're they're not concerned with efficiency and the way things, uh, the, 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 the basically the the outcome. Yeah. They're, they're they're overly concerned with the the way you do it, the process. Yeah. Right? So it has to be done this way. Yeah. And, and never mind, if it takes five months so instead exactly. of exactly one month. Yeah. I, mean, well, I told uh, the story about mind, that before. Happened. I worked for a place, uh, not for very long, because they pissed me off and I almost actually beat the, one of the guys up because he was an old asshole bigot. But <laughs> we, I worked for this place that did painting. And they they had me do a bunch of painting and some stuff. I went around to some places with people. And and it was kind of like a construction company. you know. And I don't right. know if you know anything about Japanese construction company, but those guys are really assholes. You know, they're I don't. I don't know anything. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're really bad. It's a horrible thing to do if you want to be construction in Japan. But I did mm. like tile and grout and like stuff like that work, doing stuff like that. But then I ended up on this site with them after working there and they them realizing I know a little bit about what I'm doing. They put me on the site where they were going to paint a, uh, a building. And they, had, they have sprayers. They have sprayers that you can paint mm. buildings with. And they didn't want to get... Uh, overspray they didn't want to tape up things and take the time to tape things up so they didn't yeah. so they didn't and they decided to do this building that was like it was 25 or 30 stories high it was an apartment complex and it was probably mm -hmm. i would say uh maybe like 60 apartments long mm. something like that and they were going to do it all with a hage. Oh. And it was like the little hage that's about this long. And a bucket. Yeah. And a bucket. And when I got there, they had already been painting the building for four months. Oh, geez. And everybody was using a hage. You know? That's retarded. Exactly. Oh, 
Yeah. Uh, have you have you had any experience with the uh, the abuse of Microsoft Excel by any chance? No. In Japan? No. Oh my God. So if you work for like a like a Japanese like a like a normal sort of like um like a salary man kind of job or whatever, mm -hmm. um everyone uses Excel for everything. Mm -hmm. like everything. Yeah. Like uh, I used to get emailed files. Yeah. That are that were Excel files. Yeah. Me and, too. And they were sending they were sending me screenshots. Oh. A screenshot, right? You could do it in it was a JPEG. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But they 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 actually put a, an image into an Excel file, saved it, and then sent that to me. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that before. I do I do, they do that when I was doing the automotive the cars when we do the exporting and stuff. <clears throat> I would I would ask them about cars that they had for sale at some places like I'd buy like damaged vehicles and I'd have to chop them up and put them in containers for parts and they would send me lists of like cars they had and pictures and all that and they'd send it all on an Excel file and that was like back in 2001. They've been doing that yeah. for years. <laughs> Ever since Excel came out, you know. It's a mess. I I, I used to work for uh, for Denso, the the big Japanese. Uh, you probably know Denso actually, right? Yeah, yeah. Denso, they, they make uh, car parts and whatnot. And, uh, I worked for their 3D CG sort of department, and um, the 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 bucho of Denso Tech, <laughs> right? Tech. That's yeah. Technology. Yeah. Right. He was using Windows XP mm -hmm. and Excel 2003. <laughs> and every time, every time we got a file from him, it was like we had to convert it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Into a format that could that could be read by modern versions of Excel. <laughs> and uh, it was a mess. Yeah, that's how uh, that's how they are here in Japan. They get stuck in this old way. And it it worked yeah. then, so why was why wouldn't it work now? That kind of that's their that's their whole mentality about everything, and that's that needs to change, <laughs> and it's gonna change as the culture starts to continue to fall. You know, as as more and more of the culture gets older, that's gonna ha that's gonna have to happen because they're gonna have to start bringing people in, and that part of the culture hopefully will die because it needs to. Right. You know, I don't think that yeah. part of the culture is healthy. You know. No, I I, I agree. I agree yeah. With all that. Sorry, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, no, I completely agree with all that. Uh, yeah, it's a mess. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's, I think, I, I think they just have this idea that, like, most people in Japan, like, I would say, eighty percent are like that guy here. Yeah. And and they don't really want to give that up. They think that that's the problem. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> ah, sorry about that. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Come on. There we go. Okay. Cool. Okay. There. There. We go. Sorry about that. <clears throat> no, but uh, you know, we should probably talk about uh, you know uh, Japanese wives and stuff. We've been. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, we've been talking about all kinds of other stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you've been married to two two Japanese women. Yeah. Right? Two Japanese women. Yeah. Yeah. My last wife was. Uh, she was already married before me, and she had two kids, a daughter and a son. Oh. Yeah, and she's back with her husband now. I, I was with her for about three years and three months, and then uh, uh, I went back to the U.S. I was going to bring her to the U.S., but I couldn't because I didn't realize, like, the economy was so shitty. And right. that was, I went back in 2009, in, in February, oh. Oh, and that geez. was no jobs, you know, everybody was, like, actually abandoning their homes you know it's like not much better now yeah really, you know? yeah so it was pretty it was pretty shitty over there and i didn't realize it was like that i thought i was going to go there and get a job and then i would be able to like be there for maybe three or four months and i'd save up some money and then i would bring i'd bring them over and it never happened right. and after <laughs> right. after a year of being in america she asked me for an ad a divorce because you know in Japan if they're divorced they can actually get like state money for the kids you know oh, oh, oh I know yeah <laughs> you know they can get money and they can get like free health care and all that stuff for the kids oh, yeah. for the kids and everything so she wanted yeah. a divorce for that she said she didn't really want to divorce me but she wanted to get like free medical for the kids 
which I was right. like, I was like, well, there's not much I can say. I can't say yes or no because you're going to do it anyways. And I'm in, right. I'm like 10,000 miles away. I was in Denver, you know. Oh. So it's not like I'm going to be able to do anything and say like, no, you can't, you know, or something. Because she's going to do it anyways. Yeah. She could just file for abandonment or whatever, yeah. you know. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, sure, whatever, go ahead. So then it was like a year later it was like in april of 2011 she stopped talking to me altogether and then i just found out like uh about two months before i came back to japan that she had actually went back with her ex-husband you know oh yeah yeah <laughs> so well i mean she, she she probably didn't have very many you know options other than other than that I mean, yeah i mean they it, it, being divorced with children is so frowned upon yeah uh, well she was I, I mean, think it, it, she was a uh, when I met her she was a hostess and she was working mm -hmm. as a uh, as a like a server at like a like a um, sushi like the right. the koto koto sushi you know the ones that go oh, around yeah. that go around she was like working at a sushi yeah. sushi bar like that but and then I, she was I, a hostess sushi. yeah yeah so she was she was that was basically what she was doing and she was unskilled and she went to school she wanted to go to school or she had been to school for a little while for translation and mm -hmm. I got her I was able to get her into working as a as a translator so mm -hmm. that she was able to to do that and she spoke pretty decent English and she could mm -hmm. translate English to Japanese and she was pretty decent at it and yeah. she was like, well, I can't get the job. You know how they are in Japan. It's like, I can't get the job unless I get, like, a diploma and go to school. And, and oh, yeah. in America, it's like, <laughs> if I say, like, I can speak Japanese, and they're like, cool, we mm -hmm. need somebody to translate for us. You could easily just, yeah. you, you know, if you worked for a company and you was able to translate, they wouldn't care if you had a diploma. they just care, can you yeah. do the job? You know, and if, yeah. you, if, if they hire you and you, you can do the job, they, the last thing they care about is your diploma. Because a lot exactly. of people in Japan, they might have a diploma, but they still don't know what the hell they're doing. Well, you know, you know in my industry, and I, I work in, in uh, you know, I work in a 3D CG sort of industry, and um, we don't care at all about diplomas and yeah. degrees. And I mean, I've worked with people that are that are amazingly talented, but that have, have that dropped out of high school. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean, they're, and they're and they're just fantastic. But in Japan, it's yeah that. They kind of seem to be like twenty years behind uh, the America, where in the eighties and nineties, you know, everybody needed to to go to college and everybody needed a degree, and it was really important. And yeah. and maybe some industries are still that way, but um, but in Japan, yeah, you you've got to have that on yeah. your, you know, <laughs> ready to show. <laughs> yeah, you got to have that. Yeah, yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's really silly too because. The way the culture is set up now, it's it's been steadily getting, especially since like 2003 or four, the culture for these kids is just all on the computer, and they can learn yeah. anything they want on the computer. Like you can get on the computer and learn how to do 3D graphics and animation. And I I actually I met a a guy when I was in America. I started working for a company welding, and we were building uh, fracking trailers. And I was working on mm -hmm. a on a uh, it was a, fif a fifteen by forty five foot uh, tice, uh, Titan uh, plasma cutting table, and we had to do three D mm -hmm. graphics and do the animations and the cutouts and all that stuff. And mm -hmm. the guy that I was working with was younger than I was, and he was he was a a uh, like tenth grade non graduate from high school. And yeah. he learned how to. He he was like really good at the at the uh, design aspects and making things to cut out with the plasma table, and yeah. and he said he learned all of it on YouTube. Oh, of course. You know, and he just got yeah. on online and studied everything, and and he got better at it and better at it. And the person that was working there before mm -hmm. him showed him a few things, and then he just went and learned how to use the program to design. Yeah. You know, and and, yeah. and he yeah. started. He he learned everything about AutoCAD just by watching YouTube, watching YouTube videos. videos. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, and I mean, no, I I don't want to disparage education because it, education is important, and uh, and and I I hate that 
our education system and our, our collegiate system and whatnot has become so, just, you know, Feminized. Uh, worthless, basically. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and, and, I mean, degrees have merit uh, yeah. to, a, to a point. Yeah. Um, but, but I think mostly in, the, in this day and age, um, you can almost learn anything online for yeah. free. Yeah. The, the information's there. Somebody already put it there. Yeah. And you can go and you can learn it by yourself. Yeah. There's no need for uh, so I I mean I think um you know uh, my ex-wife said something to, uh, interesting to me to, to the other day she said you know um are you saving for Se uh, my son my son's name Sagan uh, yeah. Sagan's college and I said do you really think there's going to be colleges <laughs> in in 15 years yeah <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so I, I really no don't. I don't either well I can't see him continuing especially for boys. You know, because I, I'm, I'm always talking about the MGTOW stuff and how it's yeah, yeah, yeah. it's going to, um, it's it's becoming so feminized that women don't go to college to get degrees. They go to college to find a husband. And with less and less <laughs> boys going to college and getting degrees, I think more, more boys are just going to learn stuff off the Internet. They're going to learn stuff right. off of, like, if they do go to college, it's going to be online college. And they're not actually yeah. going to go into a physical college, so they're going to be doing online courses, and they're going to be learning more about things they need to do while they're having jobs, and they're going to yeah. they're going to not want to go to college because right now it's 68 percent of teachers are female in in right. colleges, and that's going right. to continue to go up, and the more that goes up, they're going to they're already for years now they've they've geared the courses to teaching in a in a way that you would teach a female and exactly. and boys can't learn that way so yeah. you're getting a lot of boys that drop out because they can't pass classes and they can't pass courses because the courses aren't geared to allowing a boy to learn and the more that becomes evident the less guys are going to want to go to college because they're just going to end up with debt and no degree right and i think right. i think you're going to see in the future more boys that will just say, I'm not going to go to college. I'll just, you know, do an online course or, you know, or I'll just I, learn something off of YouTube or something like that. I advise against it. I, I really, I mean, I went to college and, and obviously you did, but yeah. um, I advise against it these yeah. days. It's yeah. not worth it debt. Yeah. It depends on what you're going to do. Like, I went to college and got a PhD in music education and composition, but I did that yeah. because I wanted to, like, write m music for, like, uh, uh, video games and TV and movies yeah, and radio. Yeah. yeah, and I wanted to teach music. I've been teaching music for about 25 years. Mm -hmm. So I just yeah. did yeah. it for teaching music and then I got a, a master's in psychology because I, okay. I, I knew I was going to come back here and I wanted to work with like autistic kids. I wanted to work mm -hmm. with uh, with uh, like the elderly, you know, and I wanted to work how, how with their herbivore. Uh, how do you say autistic in Japanese? Initial? I, I, I think so. I think so. Yeah. Um, anyway, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So there's a place down here. I don't know if you've ever heard of it called Shiawase Numura, which is a uh, it's a huge, huge area, like uh, about maybe a mile and a half square, and there's mm -hmm. like lots of parks and areas for them to walk around in. There's swimming pools, indoor swimming pools, and golf courses, and soccer parks, and really, it's a really huge, cool park up here in Kobe. Hmm. And the I've never, I've never heard of the park is designed the 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 whole thing is set around a uh, mentally challenged uh, autistic children. Uh, it's it, the old elderly. You know, there's like elderly homes, and there's all that stuff there. So mm -hmm. the the whole thing is set up like for for those people, and that's mm -hmm. that's the place where I where I work. And a lot of the stuff that I deal with is like the uh, uh, the uh, herbivore men and the, the otaku guys, you know, and the kids yeah. that want to stay in their room and never come out and all that stuff. I deal yeah, with a lot of those kids, you know. Oh wow! Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. That's huh. that's kind of that's what I went to college for is to come back and try to help yeah. help with that, and uh, huh. those those kids a lot of the stuff that people really think about Japanese culture, 
they don't realize like entirely the reason why you have those is because these kids are are opting out of the Japanese idea of what you should be you know and it's it's really sad when you start sitting down and you talk with them and you find out what they really think about Japanese culture and Japanese life you mm -hmm. know and 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 they they really just I mean they're ready for foreigners to come here and change things you know and and everybody else is still using Excel, you know. Yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, I mean, at, at the same time, obviously, you don't want to open the country completely. I think. No, no, um, no. I th I think you do I have mean, to be you, discerning. You, you, you need to be careful. Yeah, you you, you, know, you have to be discerning to who you bring in, yeah. but not yeah. so discerning like they are now, because they're just ridiculous mm -hmm. now. It's like you can only come to right. the country if you're married to somebody or you can come into the country for maybe two or three years if you're going to teach English. But it's like you may have, there's friends that I had that had been here for like 10 years and they kept getting mm -hmm. the one-year visa for teaching. They bounced around oh. to different schools, you know, every year. Yeah. And they would get yeah. like the one-year teaching visa. And then they would change schools about, you know, like 10 months in. They would get a new school and they would start work in two months and they would just move. And they would keep doing oh. that, and they did that for like ten years. And then after the ten year mark, you know, they would they would say like like, well, I, I'd like to stay here, and they'd try to apply for a, like a long term visa to like just live here. Or and they weren't married. Resident. Yeah, and they weren't yeah. married, and they would try to apply, and they would tell them no. You know, and it's like the person hmm. has lived in Japan for ten years. What is what's wrong with you people? You know, yeah. especially yeah. like the person has never done anything wrong. All they've done is work here. They've paid into the healthcare system and all this stuff while they've been mm -hmm. here, and then you're acting like they're gonna do something wrong. It just right. it doesn't make any sense. You know? Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, by by all means, I mean, if if somebody comes from like Pakistan, and, yeah, you know. Yeah, they want to they want to come to Japan and, and you know make a mosque or something. Okay, yeah, yeah, you should probably be you no know, concerned. But you know somebody that's that's le already living here, they're contributing to the culture, to you know to society. They're paying tax, they're paying uh, you know, nanking and whatnot. Yeah, uh, you know you should definitely let them stay. I mean that's just yeah, it's stupid. It's really stupid. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's what I mean. And I think it's it's like what we were talking about with the XL. You know, it's kind of mm -hmm. that's the that's where that's coming from that kind of like well it's it it's worked for us for the last 60 years so we're just going to keep doing that you know right even though yeah. they don't realize it's not working for you and it didn't work for you 60 years ago and it's not working for you now and they don't right. realize like like yeah but i was able to do it so we're just going to keep doing that you know right. and they'll do that to right. a fault they'll actually destroy their own selves and not realize like 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 how you say and eventually if he keeps using that XL system maybe eventually this they won't be able to convert it into files that you can use <laughs> and he'll still continue to use it yeah. you know yeah. I have like I, I, sort of a funny story uh, you know relating to that um, you, do you remember about two years ago when Microsoft stopped supporting Windows XP yeah 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 so <laughs> My company that I worked for, Denso, they panicked. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, they were like, no, what? There's not going to be any more support for XP. And this is in 2013. Yeah. Right? And I'm like, it, you're using a, what, basically a 12 year old, you know, operating system. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So, uh, dude, everyone was panicking. They're like, what are we going to do? You know, I, and I'm thinking, what do you, what do you mean? What are we going to do? Can you not upgrade? Like. Can, why, why, why don't you understand? Like we can upgrade this. <laughs> yeah. And, and but uh, eventually, I got this uh, this company wide email uh, was sent out, and it said, "Everyone, don't worry. We, you know, the, about the XP problem. We've downloaded and made an offline library of all the support dumps." <laughs> oh my lord! <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> It's like, don't worry. We kept we kept our eight bit system. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're, and, and and they were like, yeah, we, we took we got all the Japanese translations of all the you know the Microsoft Windows XP you know the documents and whatnot. We we've got them. <laughs> like I'm like, 
you don't understand the problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you don't understand the yeah. problem. It's like it's retarded. Oh, yeah, that's the thing that makes you want to like pull your hair out when you live here. Oh God. You know? Yeah, it's like I I got Windows 10 on my computer and I can't stand yeah. it. And it doesn't have any like it doesn't have Excel or you know Abbott or any of that stuff on it. And I've got some weird, some weird shit, but I just use it, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, I. I, I mean, you know, some, sometimes it's great, but. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I, I don't understand how they're like that, but that's exactly how they are. It's really sad. They have this idea yeah. that it's good enough. It's always been good enough, you know, and that's the only thing we know. You know, and I think right. that's the pro that's the problem like I was talking about when you when you look at the the people that went to college. You know, it's like mm -hmm. there's only one way to do things. And when I went to college, right. Right. I learned how to do everything on Excel files. So that's the only way I know how to do it, and that's the right, right way. So to, to the to the point that they're importing images into an Excel file and then sending the Excel file. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the problem yeah, yeah, the problem yeah. that they don't understand with that is like you're 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 making a problem for yourself by believing that some way that you've always done something is right you know right right you know right. and you you're actually right. making problems for yourself by by thinking well, that, that that's that's going to work that's going to continue yeah. to work you know and also just following orders blindly i mean yeah uh, when i when i joined uh, denso uh, a couple of years ago uh, I don't. I don't work there now. But um, when I worked there, um, one of the first things I noticed was uh, they were working on a project for Toyota, and we were making the uh, meter meter panels mm -hmm. and the control. You know, the touch screen in these new Toyotas. Yeah. We 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 were making that, and the icons for the push button, the you know, the controls and whatnot. The icons were just just regular PNG files. Right? Yeah. And, uh, and and a PNG you can compress it and you you know you, you don't have to but you can can you can compress a PNG uh, which you know reduces the quality um, but they uh, they were trying to you know change modify the icons yeah and what they, they they had lost or misplaced you know the the original Photoshop files yeah so what they were doing is they were opening uh, a, a a compressed PNG file. And, and Photoshop and erasing drop shadows by hand. Oh man! <laughs> by, by hand. I mean, like with the eraser tool. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, guys, no, <laughs> you can't do this, you know. Uh, and and eventually, it, it took it took about six months, but uh, but I I convinced them to let me. Uh, remake all the icon files with vector, you know, paths, yeah. vector paths, and, uh, and 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 they were very impressed. But it took them six months to to yeah. come around to it. And yeah. They were literally erasing drop shadows with the eraser tool. Uh, it was it was insane. I was shocked. Yeah. I mean, well, that's the shocked. thing is like and the reason they were doing it is because someone had told them to do it. Yeah, exactly. They don't and question they it. Orders. Yeah, they don't exactly. question it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's the that's the thing. And, it's and like I don't care if I've only worked for your place for a couple of weeks. If you tell me to do something stupid, I'm going to be like, "What? What? You want me to do what?" You know? I call I called a meeting. Yeah. <laughs> I made <laughs> They probably thought I was like this guy gene asshole. Yeah. <laughs> I called a meeting like the second week I was there, and I had this like five-page you know, <laughs> yeah. like you no know, complaint. Basically, like here's what you're doing wrong, and this is why. And uh, oh man, they probably thought I was awful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you you're trying to change how they've always done it, and the way they do yeah. it is right. Yeah. You know, but that's what I think is funny. That's you're. It's actually calling into into uh, their 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 idea. Of, like the way I do it is right, and the way I do it right. is the only way I do it is right. So with Microsoft not being supported anymore they can't that actually stops that from being the case because exactly. it, it can't be the only way and it can't be the best way because it doesn't exist anymore you know mm -hmm. so it kind of it kind of like that's what really makes their kind of brain lock up because 
they can't use that as an excuse now. It's like, this is the best way to right. do it. It's like, well, if it's the best way to do it, then why does no computer system support it anymore? You right. know? Right. <laughs> you know? Exactly. And that's exactly. that's something that, that it, it kind of forces them to kind of like think about what their idea of right and wrong is. And they don't like right. that. They don't want to think that yeah. way. <laughs> yeah, it's too much work, basically. Yeah. I mean... Um, it's it's it takes you know brain power <laughs> to figure out uh, good ways of doing things and it's just easier and, and you know so sort of cheaper yeah. uh, to just follow orders and yeah. um, I, I I sympathize with them a little bit but I, I my my main goal is efficiency and outcome yeah and I, I tell I tell every time I go to a meeting um you know, I almost always I say like koritsu like you know, it, it's uh, it's about efficiency. Like efficiency yeah. is important. How how quickly can you do a thing to a particular level of quality? And that's not you Japan. Know? Like that's <laughs> so important. Yeah. Yeah, but it, it's so so. It's the anti like they're so anti that. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 Like they'll they'll come up with some design for a for a vehicle or something, and they'll they'll take like two years just to get it into like into like a, mm -hmm. a thing where they think about maybe making it you know you know like the the prius yeah. they were they were they were actually working on the prius in the 90s you know in, in the early 90s they didn't actually yeah. produce the car until almost 2000 you know yeah so it took them like almost yeah, I mean, 10 I, years to to bring that to fruition and, and the car industry is one of the few industries where japan is is still sort of uh dominant yeah, they're the and they're I think, the leader. I think really, just because the the competition is horrible. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and they're yeah. actually they're, a lot of the stuff that they're doing, they're doing it trying to do it cheaply, and that's what's fucking them up now. Is they're trying yeah. to they're trying to keep the quality, and and make it just as cheap, you know, mm -hmm. and that's the problem that they're having. That's why they had that huge thing with Toyota and the. Uh, company that made oh, the brakes the, yeah the brakes and also the company yeah. that made the uh airbags you know where they recalled all the cars that had the airbag problems i didn't hear about the, there's that a, recently yeah there's a company in in uh japan that makes airbags for all the cars like all the japanese mm -hmm. cars and they had they were having malfunction with them and people died from them and they had to oh. they had to like uh like take them out and replace them because they were having a malfunction with these airbags and these uh this company like went i i don't know if they went out of business or something but they had to find companies to replace the airbags with and it was it was a really really fucked up thing but it's it's because they like it's you know how they have in japan they have like one company that supplies all companies and that's that's a that's a big right. problem when you don't well, have exactly. multiple that's companies. That's yeah, yeah. There's <laughs> a I work for. <laughs> yeah. There's a problem when you have one company that does everything for everybody because right. there's no competition and it makes it to where you can charge whatever you want for whatever you're doing because you have yeah. no competition in the in the market. You know, right. which is yeah. never a good thing for business. You know, it's a great thing for a company. You know, because they're going to make a lot of money. But it's never a good thing for the for the industry itself, yeah. you know, because yeah. people lose out from that, and you end up mm -hmm. with things like what happened with Toyota, you know, where you end up with all these people that are that are you know they're getting hurt, you know, people are literally losing their lives and dying because one company can do whatever they want because they have no competition. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. Nice. Yeah. I'm sure we'll probably get hate for all this. <laughs> I'm sure the comment, well, I mean, yeah, I'm sure the comment section will be filled filled with stuff because we're two people that have lived in Japan a combined probably twenty years, you know, and yeah, and yeah. and uh, obviously we don't know anything about it, right? <laughs> no, no, yeah, no yeah, no yeah, the weeaboos no more. So, <laughs> no, I mean, you know, yeah. no, yeah. I mean, when I moved here, I I was I was. Um, Pretty positive about Japan. Um, yeah, I didn't think it was the you know uh, utopia. 
Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Right. A lot of people but, do. Uh, but I was I was positive. I was like, you know, there 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 appear to be things that they're doing in this country that are good. Like after the tsunami. Yeah. Um, you know, no one was looting and stealing and yeah. robbing. And well, that's not something that, that was pretty cool. Yeah. That's not something but that happens here. Really, yeah, yeah, but but when you figure out why they weren't looting and stealing, that that's that's when it clicks. Yeah, right? exactly. The reason they weren't looting and stealing is because stealing is against the law, and they obey the law. Yeah. I mean, I mean, like in my neighborhood, I I go out I, I go out at night, you know, at twelve and you know, midnight or whatever. Yeah. And uh, there are people standing. At the shingle, the, yeah. the the crosswalk. Yeah. And they're standing there because it says don't walk. Yeah, that's a big thing that annoys There's the no fuck cars. out of me. There's yeah. no cars. Yeah, <laughs> I've I've seen them do the same thing when the lights when the lights are like green, and they come yeah. up to, they come up to the thing where it's a one way, and it's like it's like <laughs> ten o'clock at night. There's nobody around. There's no cars or anything. It might even be two in the morning, and you'll see them stand there, and they'll wait. It's yeah. like, what the fuck yeah, are you yeah, waiting yeah. for? It's like 10 feet across t to the other side. There's no cars anywhere. And you're yeah. waiting there because what? Why? I, 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 sometimes I actually say, I, I actually say, like, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it's like, you know, they're just like, <laughs> yeah. I, I sometimes tell them, like, I'll, I'll sometimes come up to the thing and I'll look both ways and I'll go, Dostan. Like, quite, 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 quite <laughs> I'll tell them stuff like that where they feel, it makes them feel stupid because you're like, kuruma kunai yo, kuai desu ka? Are you scared? Kuai desu ka? And then I just walk, I just go, and they they kind of like it 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 like freezes their brain because you can see they're like looking like yeah. he's right. There's no cars, and he just went and he didn't get hit. Maybe I should go, and, and they sit there. They sit there thinking so long. The light actually eventually does turn red, and then they go. You yeah. know, and then they and then they look at you like you're the example. you're the dumb one. You know, right? A, a funny example of this is uh, if you if you have, have ever tried to uh, find uh, subtitles, Japanese subtitles for a movie. Yeah, like to sh like. Um, if if you were gonna you know watch Game of Thrones with your girlfriend or something, and you wanted to find the Japanese subtitles or Lord of the Rings or whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah. If you go to a subtitle website, I mean, there's like a, a hundred Arabic, right? Yeah. <laughs> subtitles for Lord of the Rings, and there's like two hundred and like you know Finnish, and you know like there's so many subtitles. But if you go to Japanese, it's like zero. Yeah. Right? Why? It's exactly. not that they don't like. But it's not that they hate Lord, Lord of the Rings. They like it. Yeah. But, but, but stealing and making subtitles it is against the law. Yeah. So there's no subtitles. Yeah, it's just <laughs> retarded. It makes no sense. It's insane. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah that's 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 the thing that has always like really annoyed me about Japan is that whole that whole mindset that they have. And that's actually that's actually what's I believe is probably going to cause the Japanese culture to to fall, you know, is probably. that sense of of we have to do it because reasons, you know, right, right you know, right. it's like well why do you do that because reasons, you know, right, and it's it's like yeah. I'm, like I'm an atheist, you know, and I don't yeah. like when people are like you know I believe in God and I believe in all this stuff and then you're like why. You're like, well, because right. my family believed in it, and because I was raised that way, and I just think it's mm -hmm. true. It's like, yeah, but what? But why would you believe it? You know, what reasoning yeah. could you have to believe it? You right. know, well, and they and don't have really it, any it, it, reasons. They just—it's it's just the, the way it is, and that's—that's right. that's the it, thing. The you know, they got the shoga, shogunai. You know, yeah. it's just yeah. the way it is. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I'm an atheist as well, but, yeah. Yeah, so I understand. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's basically just like believing something because reasons, you know, that's, and that's what they do. Yeah. yeah. It, it's very, um, I would say, I'd say Japanese culture is very automatic. Yeah, right? yeah. So it's very, it's very repetitive. Um, you basically do the same thing every day. Yeah. And that's, you know. Yeah. Uh, when I go to work, I see the same people 
that I don't know. I don't know them. Yeah. But I, yeah. I've seen them for like a whole year. <laughs> yeah. You know? Or yeah. like two years. Like yeah. Every day. Yeah. And you, and you and just say, oh, Ohio Gozaimas. Ohio Gozaimas. Yeah. You know? That's oh, it. No, no, no. What I mean is, is, is not even, not, not co workers. Oh, people just people. On the street. Oh, okay. Yeah. On the street. Yeah, like, like, on the trains and on the, the buses and everything. Yeah. Same people. And, and we we had the same schedule. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and uh, you know, I mean, there's there's you know guys and girls that I see ev literally every day, and I've never said a word to them, and, but we know each other. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's bizarre. Yeah, I've never experienced that in America. I mean, yeah, in America, your schedule is anywhere from ten to twenty minutes. <laughs> you know, to, like like. Uh, you you might be late to work. You might be early. You know, you're never on the same schedule. Yeah, well, it's right. because it's everything's Japan. so timed here. In you Japan, you get on the same, same train. Schedule. Yeah, yeah. Everybody yeah, gets on the same late. train to get to work. It's to the point where if I'm late to work, the the people that I see, I don't pass them on the street, but they're waiting in front of the train. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like the, yeah. 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 When I get out, I'm like, oh, that must mean I'm late. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's that's the thing. A lot of people don't realize that's going to be the case until they get here, and you start to realize it. And you don't even notice that at first. It takes you like a year of being here, or a year and a half of it being here, before you notice that. Because you have to have a like, you have to work for like an English school or something for about mm -hmm. six months or something, and then you start eventually to see that. You know, because yeah. like a yeah, lot of yeah. a lot of the things with foreigners is we end up getting on the same train every day. We stand on the same platform. Mm -hmm. You know, so we come down the stairs and we stand in the same spot. And when you do that for six months, eventually, like, you realize, like, where I need to stand on the train to where I go up the right stairs to lead me to my destination. <laughs> so you start to learn where you need to get on the train. And when you start standing on the same, like, the same train, you realize that yeah. everybody else is doing that, too. And eventually yeah. you realize that everybody on the train, when you go home at night, and everybody that's on the train when you come are the same people. They're almost the same people. Yeah. I mean, there, there may be a little give and take. But, yeah. But yeah. There might be like five or yeah. six people that are different in the morning right. and at night. Right. It, but it's incredible. I mean. Yeah. It, it's it's, it's pretty much the same people. Maddening. Yeah. 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 yeah it's, it really is. It's it it gets you into this mindset where you're where you're just like you want to. I mean, you can almost see the suicide culture and stuff because it makes you just no, want to pull yeah. your hair out. You know? No, I know. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah absolutely. I, I kind of along those lines. I when I worked for a company in uh, Sapporo about three, four, four years ago, um, they had a policy where if you were late, even by a second, yeah, they would take one third of your pay for that day. Ah, uh, right? that sounds like a good yeah. a good plan. <laughs> very, very good very, way very, to steal very, money from your employees. Good. They already no, like the, I, I, They already make I was you work. Late once. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was late once, and I was literally late by I, I don't know how much because I clocked in at nine. Yeah. Right. And it said nine nine a.m. Yeah. And it didn't say like how many seconds. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But technically, I should have clocked in before nine. Oh. Okay. Because after nine, that's late. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's, so, yeah. So like, like this lady, you know, this this waiter, this she comes to my desk and she's like, you know, oh, I'm sorry, you you were late this day, and I'm like, what? No, it says nine, right? We're supposed to be here at nine, so I was here at nine, and she's like, no, 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 but it actually, you're technically you're late if you if you clock in at nine, so your salary is going to be reduced by one third, thirty three percent, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, so thirty three percent, you're going to take thirty percent. Well, then I'm going to go home. Exactly. <laughs> and I'm going to come back at 2. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But I, and I did. I did. And they yeah. couldn't do anything about it. They were just like, no. Yeah, I'll clock, yeah. In at, I'll clock in at 8.45 every day, and I'm going to leave at 2 p.m. in the afternoon then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's, yeah. An, it's just incredible. The, the... Yeah. 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 I hope the weeaboos watch this, because... Yeah, you know, me too. <laughs> you need to understand. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they have this. They, I, I people, they have this idea of how J they really believe they know how Japan is by watching like Pikachu, and reading manga. Yeah, fucking anime yeah. and stuff. Yeah, I mean, they think that that's that how Japan so... is, and you're gonna come here, and everybody's gonna be in cosplay. Yeah, and I mean, 
I mean, you know, in the company I work for currently, actually, almost all my coworkers are otaku. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so I mean, it, 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 you know, it depends on where you work, but you can get into sort of an otaku culture, uh, kaisha. But yeah. um, but the the culture largely is not like that. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 even the words they use in anime are not normal Japanese. No. It, yeah, like you can't even learn Japanese by watching anime because yeah. it's like always it's. <laughs> well, I mean, they they're having a problem now actually in Japan because they actually they have this weird thing where they don't want to use people's names in anime because they oh. I don't know why they have this thing where they they don't want to use real names for characters in in anime. But the problem that they're having is they've come up with these weird names for for Japanese anime. And people in Japan are starting to name their children those names, <laughs> and that's a pr that's a problem for Japan. So they have these people that are naming their kids after like famous Japanese manga characters. Yeah, you, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are there are a lot of uh, weird names um, because you can basically make any name you want. Yeah. With you know with, with kanji and whatnot. Yeah. Um, the, the, the funniest thing about Japanese is, is is this. Even Japanese people don't know each other's names. Yeah. If they read it, they yeah. don't know. Like, yeah. Unless it's unless it's just a really common name like like Steve, you know, yeah. or something like yeah. that. They have no idea. Yeah. And, and the, the you know Yoji, but it could, if it, if it's a really common last name, maybe they can guess it right. But they have to guess. Yeah. They can't read it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's you know, I mean, that's, that's something that I thought was really funny because, like, even my my ex wife's mother and my ex ex wife's mother, she had like the yeah. little uh, computer, the computer dictionary, and they yeah. have to use that to actually um, they have to use that to actually read the newspaper because they use kanji <laughs> that lots of them have to like look in the kanji and they have to find out what they're talking about. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Crossing. Hey, what's up? Not much. How you guys doing? Is this good, live? good. Yeah. Well, no, it's not live. I can't do lives. You know that. I'm record. Oh, so, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm recording it though. I'm recording it. Okay. So I'm gonna okay. put it up after after we're done. Mm, all right. That sounds cool. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Nice to meet you. Nice yeah. to meet you, Ben. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Another guy eating in um, Japan. Yeah. 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 Are you Japanese? No, no. No, no. <laughs> no, she's actually going to move to. She's thinking of moving to Korea. Uh, yeah. 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 She's yeah, from. New, she's from New York. She's a New Yorker. <laughs> yeah, from from the United States. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. yeah. She's a New Yorker. <laughs> uh, New York. So, yeah. how are you guys? How's uh, the conversation going so far? Good. Sorry that I interrupted. <laughs> Good. We're no. we're throwing we're throwing the weeaboos under the bus. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna get a lot of hate. Yeah. Lot of hate for that. Yeah. The thing the thing that makes it to where I don't get as much hate is I don't put subtitles in. If I put subtitles in where it was all in <laughs> Japanese, that that would that would get me so much hate on my channel because I do most of my videos are not really rosy colored glasses talking about unicorns and fairy tales and you know sprinkling yeah. fairy dust everywhere you know mm -hmm. which is which is what a lot of the uh the j vloggers do they get on they get on the internet and they talk about how great it is in japan and how wonderful everything is and if you say anything bad about japan you know like the trains are really crowded or anything like that they'll just fucking attack you they attack you and like yeah. like you're talking bad about japan and how dare you like all this kind of shit and it's really hilarious your sword. yeah it's it's really hilarious how they're, they're they really believe that you can't say anything about japan bad because nothing's yeah, bad about japan everything about I, japan is amazingly awesome you know I, well i mean <laughs> i think i think the average weeaboo's life is so lonely and you know, like the void of any content that they they have to believe that Japan is this utopia. Yeah. yeah what's he, what's he, a, a weeaboo? Is that like someone who just like uh, is in love with the thought of Japan? Usually, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Usually, what it is is it's somebody that like 
obsesses with the culture. They mm. speak some Japanese, but they they <laughs> actually mispronounce it. They they yeah. they mispronounce it. They're like arigato, that kind of stuff. You yeah. know, where you're <laughs> like, you're, yeah, exactly. <laughs> where, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're they're just yeah. like totally like they they mispronounce everything. They they misuse the words. You know, they 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 they, they say like female pronouns at the end of sentences when they're speaking to men you know the, the things like that because they just don't know any better and then they use like they use words from comic books like it's really japanese and then right. japanese yeah, people look at them like an idiot you know if, if you speak if you speak japanese that they use in anime you will seem like the biggest tool like yeah yeah they'll think you're a complete dork because it's not, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not though even the way sentence structure goes in English, in Japanese, no, you know. Not at all. Yeah, mm, it, it that's does. Too funny. Yeah, it's it's what? freaking hilarious. It would be like going around, going around and and trying to speak English from watching South Park episodes. Yeah, uh, or like <laughs> you know? Clint, Clint Eastwood westerns or something. You know, it'd be, yeah. it'd be so weird, or you know, I, I like like um um. Often you hear like uh, in, in Japanese anime like kimi, you know, yeah. like it, yeah, it, 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 it's, it's, it's the word that means you, but no one uses kimi. Yeah, like, exactly. It's only it's never, only in never, anime. Never, never. Yeah, you know? or like um, ore, You'll, you know, like th that means me. Like, yeah, you know, never, almost never say ore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You only hear stuff like that in in anime, and you hear it in music. Like yeah, in songs, exactly. the love love songs. And yeah, in love yeah, songs. Yeah. yeah, they'll say it all in yeah. love songs and stuff. But it's it's like artistic words. They're artistic words, another, and that's these really anime kids, these game. weeaboos, will do that. They'll use like artistic <laughs> words in everyday conversation, and it makes all the rest of the Japanese people that are listening to them just shake their head and go, "God, what a fucking idiot!" You know. <laughs> another, another really funny word is is genki, right? Yeah. So like yeah. like everybody says like genki this car. Right. Yeah, yeah. But you almost never say that. Like, no. Almost, I, like, if, if if you're talking about someone's baby, you're like, I'm just talking about Yankee's dog. No, you know, like, yeah. It, 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 you would never, almost never say it in normal in a normal conversation. Yeah. Right? But. Yeah. But yet, yeah, that's actually the name of of many textbooks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Ginky. Yeah, Ginky. Ginky. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they do the same thing. Like a lot of the new teachers that come to Japan, they learn that word. And they'll come into the teacher. They'll come in, and the first thing they tell their students in the morning is, "Mina Genki desu ka? You know, <laughs> and everybody's everybody's like, "Hi, so this," you know, and it's like, "You're you're the English teacher. Why are you teaching them anime stuff?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so yeah. funny. You know, because, yeah. I mean, if you really want to ask somebody how they're doing, you don't say like "Genki desu ka? You say like "Choshi wa do desu ka? You know, like how how's your the state, your, how's your status? You know? Yeah, but you don't yeah. even ask that. Is the funny thing? Like, yeah, most like, of them don't care. Japanese people so so rarely ask personal questions. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and that's one thing that they don't get. The weeaboos don't get. They'll try to come over here and yeah. ask all kinds of personal questions to them and make them uncomfortable. They'll be exactly. very they'll be very uncomfortable with talking to you because you're asking oh, okay. so many personal questions and you're telling them like you may be speaking to them in English. And you'll be telling yeah. them about your personal life, and Japanese people don't do that. They don't want to oh, know they, about they your personal life, embarrassed. and they don't care about it. You know, so when yeah, you start yeah. telling them all this stuff about your personal life, about your wife and your kids and your dog, right. you know, they're right. like, "I don't care. Stop talking." <laughs> well, they, well, they don't. They don't care, but they also don't want to hear it because, like, it, it, it gets them involved. Yeah, know? and they don't want to get involved. Yeah, they don't want to get involved in your life. You know, they only want exactly. you to do your job at work and get done yeah. what needs to be done, and that's all that needs to be said. Yeah, 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 basically. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm going to open another beer real quick. I'll be all right, right back. All right, cool. Yeah. So how are you doing, Crossing? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. How long has uh, Ben been in Japan for? I didn't ask. I think it. I think he's been in Japan for a while because he's he's uh, was married and divorced now. Oh, oh, in Japan. Yeah. Hey Ben. Hey. Hey, how long have you been in Japan for? About four and a half. 
four and a half years. Five, oh, wow. Five years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, that's cool. Yeah, it's been, a, it's been um, 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 kind of a mess, actually. I mean, um, it, people who want to come and live in Japan need to know that the salaries and the career opportunities are incredibly limited. Yeah. If you're if you're skilled in some area and you're just a wizard at something, uh, then you can get a job. If not, it's gonna be really hard. And the jobs that you do get, the salaries will be pretty low. Wow. That's really the take home message I think uh, that people need to understand is that Japan is is fun to live in, but um, uh, it's miserable to work in. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's that's the one reason why I do a lot of stuff like the exporting of cars because you can make a lot of money, and my money isn't dependent on Japan, on Japan culture. It's depending yeah, on foreign yeah. cultures like Australia and America and stuff like that. So you're yeah. you're making money off of people in other countries and not money off the people in Japan. Because if you're if you're going to try to do that, you're not going to make much money. Yeah, I mean, and you're smarter than I am in that respect because I mean, I, I, my my industry, I, I I have a skill, and I've sort of like, you know, I've sort of like, uh, what do you call it? Pigeon, well, I've Pigeon, sort of like pigeonholed yourself. Put myself yeah. in. The, yeah, yeah. I put myself in a situation where I have to work in this industry doing this thing. You yeah, know, I, I do. I do. You know, modeling and and three uh, D, um, three D modeling and CG and whatnot. Yeah. So I have to do that thing. I can't change careers at this point. You know? Yeah. I'm 35 years old. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, 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 I've sort of pigeonholed myself into this industry. And in Japan, your options are incredibly limited. Yeah. Having said that, I've been incredibly, I've been incredibly lucky to get the jobs that I have gotten. Yeah. But my salary is about half what I would make in America. What yeah. I was making in America five years ago. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's 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 sad. That's why a lot of people think like, well, I'm gonna like I, I hear all these weeaboos talk about like I'm gonna go to America or I'm gonna go to Japan and I'm gonna be like a comic book illustrator, you know, <laughs> <I> know <laughs> or or yeah, or I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Japan and I'm gonna be a, a video game designer. Oh God, that's the worst. Yeah, exactly. They don't they just the don't worst. get it. They think it's like a great job. You know? Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, you will sleep under your desk, and that's not a joke. Yeah. 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 Well, you will sleep under your desk. Yeah. You will <laughs> live at work if you do that. You know, the average work yeah. week work week in Japan for normal people, and that's why they say the average work week is ninety hours. But if you do yeah. a job like that, you're looking at like a hundred and seventy or two hundred hours a week. Oh yeah. And if, you're not, and if, you won't get paid want. for a lot of that. A lot of the times oh, no, you'll you'll you'll, you'll be doing overtime work and not getting paid for that overtime work. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. You'll get paid for no, about I mean, maybe seventy hours of the two hundred hours that you work. Right, right. If if you want to work in the game industry, you should live in America. Yeah. You should stay in America. Yeah. <laughs> don't, exactly. Don't move to Japan if you want to work in the game industry because you will become a slave. Like, yeah. You literally. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, the game industry in America is also pretty bad. I mean, I, I mean, I've been lucky in that respect. Um, I, I've worked for a, a great companies in America. Um, I, I, I worked for the company that you know, you know, Twisted Metal, the game. For, yeah. Yeah, for I, I yeah. made the PlayStation Three version of that. Um, oh, cool. My team. Yeah. So uh, I, I'm, and they were great. They were amazing company that I worked for. Actually, <laughs> that the shirt I'm wearing right now is actually their logo. You sleep what? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, great company, but uh, but you know, um, the game The Last of Us, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, made by Naughty Dog in uh, in L.A. Yeah. So uh, I had a buddy that worked there, and uh, and he said that the minimum work week was about seventy hours. Yeah, man, that's just crazy. Yeah, he quit. Well, he quit. Yeah, <laughs> this the, yeah. you know the, those games, they, mm-hmm. all the graphics process or whatever and uh how much power it takes to i don't know they're just so much more upscale now that's why i think the indie gaming scene is kind of booming a little bit yeah simpler games that don't take as long but the the budgets aren't to make 
to make, and the budgets aren't as big. Like, you don't need, like, <laughs> I don't know how much money you need to make these AAA titles, but we're talking millions of dollars. A lot. A yeah. lot. <laughs> I can tell you, a Twisted, Twisted Metal for PS3 sold about 600,000 to a million. I'm not sure, but not quite a million copies. Right. And it didn't make profit. I <sighs> It's crazy. How, how do you sell something a million times? <laughs> Not make profit. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, and that's PlayStation 3. Imagine the Xbox 360 and PS4. Yeah. Imagine, imagine those platforms and, and the increased graphics and all that other crap. Well, that's a lot of the a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about with the, with Japan. If you if you sell like even 500 of them or a thousand of them, and you realize you're not making a profit. Then you raise how much they cost, so that you do make a profit. Right. Simple as that. You don't let it happen a million times. That's ridiculous. Right. Well, but that's Japan. Well, that's that's one hundred percent Japan. DLCs are so big. Yeah. DLCs are they're trying to make that like uh, more of a thing where you can keep buying more more value into the game, uh, but. So that way, you know, so a game, like, by the time you're done buying the DLC, it's like a $150 game, basically, if you get all basically. the additional content. Yeah. yeah that's, that's actually a lot of the, the uh, complaints about Star Wars Battlefront, the new mm -hmm. Battlefront <clears throat> game. Uh, has a lot of DLC, and but if you want to get everything, you have to pay about $200, I think. Yeah. And that's just, that's ridiculous. I mean, God, you should, you should make a game, you know? Uh, yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you make a patch or something, or... or you know, if you make a an, an add-on or something, well, that's fine. You can charge for that. That's fine. But gee, this DLC is out of control. Yeah. Really. Yeah, I have a, I have another friend that that he lives in, or I think she's from uh, Denver, and she's a game designer as well. She works for a company designing games, and she said that they do a, they do a lot of that now with the games where you buy you pay a lot of money, sometimes like a hundred and twenty dollars for a game, and it's not mm -hmm. even the full game. You have to buy. You have to buy the things to to finish the game. So yeah. when if you buy the original system, you can't actually play the game. You need other. You need other oh, yeah. things to to finish playing the game. You know. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I the, I think right now the uh, the freemium model is is pretty popular. Um, a good example of this is a uh, Hearthstone, a uh, Blizzard's game Hearthstone. Have you have you played that? No, 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 I haven't, I haven't. Oh. But I know it's, Blizzard. Uh, it's a, yeah, it, it's basically a card game. Um, it, it's kind of based on the characters from World uh, World of Warcraft or Warcraft World. And, sure. uh, and, and it's free to play, but they get you to buy packs of cards. Right? right. Right. And I mean, you sink money into that game like nothing else. I mean, it's ridiculous. I probably spent... Two hundred dollars in three months. <laughs> yeah, that's the yeah. last thing. I've never done any of that. Like I, yeah, have, me uh, I have an Xbox 360, but I don't have yeah. Xbox Live or anything. So I'm like really uh, weird that way. When yeah. I got into gaming, I got my Super Nintendo when uh, the PlayStation One and N64 was already out. So I've always been behind the generation. So I don't even have like the new consoles. And that's the kind of way I like it because when you go to buy games, you, you, it's, it's it's a backlog. I get to get all the complete editions and all that other stuff. Yeah. My DLC is already all included, and well, it works out better for me. Yeah, I I actually don't I don't advise people to own consoles. Period. I I think yeah. consoles are a waste of money. I mean, PC PC is the best. PC and uh, Ketai. Uh, smartphone um, is the best. <laughs> it's the best, you know. Basically, the best systems right now. Um, yeah. I mean, if you, if I, even when the PlayStation Four was released, it was inferior to yeah. PC stats. Yeah. And yeah. now it's massively inferior. Oh uh, yeah. Um, yeah. When, the I, when you I developed. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I when I developed games for the PlayStation Three, it was. You're always fighting with the system, with the console, to try to get memory. Oh my God, we go. We don't have memory, so we got to do this. And, you know, it's 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 a, it's a huge hurdle to get over to to make games for these systems. And so, so I, I no, I'm a big PC advocate. 
Mm. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, that's how most people are nowadays. They they play mostly on online online games. It's funner. It's funner anyways when they can get on the computer because a lot of the stuff you can do online with other people. Yeah. So you can actually do Twitch streams and you know you can mm -hmm. play video games with somebody in another country. You know, right. at the same time, you know that kind of stuff, and it's the console is is really kind of a, a thing where you're playing by yourself. You know, yeah, kinda, it can be kind of lonely. You're sitting in your yeah. house alone, you know, with a beer, you know, right, with your right. cats, you know, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. Cats. Yeah. Steam is yeah. huge. Steam, yeah, yeah. So well, I mean, if if you can. If you can actually, like, get online and play, you know, you might be in a game where you're playing with, like, ten other people, you know, right. and everybody's in a different country, you know, and you have, like, these friends yeah. that you play games with all the time, and they're not even, you don't even know them, but it makes you feel like you have friends, yeah. you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, and it's yeah. kind of it's online, cool. Online game. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of cool that way when you have PC games, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, like... Uh, Sort of what I was saying uh, earlier about consoles being underpowered. Um, uh, take VR for example. Do you, do you guys know about Oculus? Oh, Oculus, Oculus Rift. Rift. Yeah, they have the the Rift, the Oculus Rift. Yeah. 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 So um, the you know, and Sony has the uh, Sony Morpheus. Do you know about that? No. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I I I've heard hmm. I've heard about a similar thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's basically Sony's own VR headset that they're developing. Right. But it requires 120 frames per second to to do fluid head tracking and and whatnot. Hmm. And we you can't get 120 frames per second out of anything these yeah. days. Yeah. Nothing. And and it's being developed for the PlayStation 4. Like you can't <laughs> oh, right. you can't get 120. You can half it. They have actually a mode where you can half the frame rate and get it to 60. But even at 60, it's really difficult to maintain yeah, 60. Do 60. Yeah, yeah, barely. Yeah, so it's just yeah, a complete, yeah. complete waste of the time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is, this yeah, they, is where... They're, they're looking for double the frames per second. Yeah. <laughs> the system yeah. itself, like, you know, on average, will maybe do, like, 50. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I went to, uh, to the Oculus uh, headquarters in, in Tokyo just, like, through three weeks ago and I was talking to them and we were we were just kind of like you know had a sort of meeting with those guys and uh, and I was like and I asked them I, I, I just totally asked them I was like how do you expect to get 90 frames per second oh the, uh, the oculus the final version is 90 FPS and I was like how do you expect us to get 90 frames per second out of these engines <laughs> <laughs> and they were like well <laughs> they, you know, they they don't have an answer. You know, it's just yeah. That's just that's to. so fucking scary. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. they they don't figure those things out. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they don't mean, think about that until it's done. Until they're until it's done and they realize it doesn't work. Well, that's what happens. Like, what is it? Uh, one of the Batman games. Like, there's some major problems with the latest one. Yeah. Uh, and, and a lot of people, are, you know, not just that, but what was it another Assassin's Creed game? And there was all, yeah. all these different problems, and the, you know, <laughs> you know, they, they, and they know that it has problems when they send it out. They just like, oh well, hopefully it won't be as bad. And it's like, no, it's horrible. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. yeah, all kinds of bugs and problems and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I guess, I guess that the Oculus Rift is going to be more better suited for a uh, PC then. Oh, definitely, right. definitely port. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they they may port it, not port, but they they may make an Oculus um, that it can be used with PlayStation, maybe. Mm -hmm. But it's primarily a, a PC peripheral. Yeah. yeah. Um, because PCs can be upgraded, they can be they can become faster. Yeah. Um, and the engines, uh, you know, basically that we only have two engines right now: Unity and UE4. Uh -huh. Um. Uh, and those are being sort of tuned and optimized to be used with VR. VR is sort of tricky because you have to render things from two cameras uh, right. because humans have two two eyes. You no, know? right? Yeah. So, uh, 
uh, yeah, it has to be optimized, you know, to, to render everything twice. Mm -hmm. So you're not you're not just trying to get 90 frames per second. You're trying to do 90 frames per second twice. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's really hard, and yeah. uh, you know, th there's no there's no good answer right now. Anyway, that's sort of a, sort of a rabbit trail. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I'm derailing your conversation yeah. like hardcore. Yeah. All, uh, all into that. But I got, I got. Do you think that it'll be successful before we just get off of it? Then you guys can talk about whatever. Like the Oculus uh, Rift. Do you... Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, uh, absolutely. Oh yeah. Yes. You think it'll yeah. catch on? Definitely, yes. Um, not just Oculus, but also the uh, uh you know, Valve is making the Vive, Vive mm -hmm. headset. Yeah, and it's uh, it's laser tracked. <laughs> it has uh, like two uh, light, what they call lighthouses, I guess. Like, um, they, you you put one in one end of your room and one at another, and it, it actually laser tracks your uh, rotation and position tracking. It, it's it's fantastic. Uh, the, the Oculus system is uh, optical, so it uses a camera to track um, infrared spots on your 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 you know, H and D, you know, head mounted display. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's all great technology, and it's and it's fantastic. And when you actually experience it, um, uh, there's this thing called uh, presence. What we call presence. Uh, right. When you actually feel like you are in an environment. Wow. Right. So like like. Um, you can play a game, right, and it's scary. Maybe there's a dragon or something like that. But uh, but you're, but when you experience presence, it's like it tricks the part of your brain that is like wishiki. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> He's got to think in English again. Yeah, wishiki. Yeah, it's, well, it's, like it's hard. It's, it's when you've lived here as long as we have, it's hard for us to start trying to think <laughs> yeah. again. Yeah, you yeah, start yeah. lose. A lot of people don't realize you start losing English words. Because you speak so much in Japanese all the time, you can't think of what it would be called in English anymore. Uh, it's funny. So, so, so your yeah. subconscious uh, is tricked mm. uh, into believing that a thing is real, and mm. um, and you experience presence. Right? Is what they say. So oh. you can be standing in a white room, but you're twenty feet above the floor, and you feel fear, right? Because you're you're experiencing presence, and uh, and this happens with VR. So just because of that alone, I think VR has a very bright future. I think that's where movies and games and almost everything we interact with needs to be VR. Oh man, that's gonna do for porn. Have you seen the Japanese? What they're doing? Like they have like no, <laughs> they. Oh my God! Like. Oh God, I'm so embarrassed to even like say it, but like they have this like this little little like jack off machine, uh -huh. right? It goes like this, I guess. Uh huh. And and like if you put on the <laughs> VR headset, it's like a it's like a, like a little like anime character that's like tricking you off. <laughs> <laughs> I sh I'm serious. Like this, I saw it. Like I was at a VR conference, and that was there. <laughs> yeah, that's it's hilarious. That would only happen in Japan. You wouldn't go to like a comic con and see some shit like that. <laughs> no, no. I mean, you I might see it. Like, oh, you God. might see it in a back room somewhere or something. But it's on the main right. floor in Japan. Yeah, right. it's like no, this is really cool, and it's like oh Jesus, dude. <laughs> that's stuff it's, that it's we would be like, no, 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 don't do that. That <laughs> made me tear. That was so funny. Yeah, that's that's shit. Oh. They they really have no idea. Like, that's not something you should do in Japan, for how for how <laughs> like how like uh, you know everything has to be just so, and you you have to be very uh, particular about everything. They really have no conscious idea that that's not something you should do. You know? mm, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, who they'll, gives a damn? Let's just put it out. There. Yeah, they'll they're you'll literally out. walk into something and they'll have like like sex dolls or something, you know, and they'll be yeah. like, oh, "This is a new product," and, it, and everybody's like, "No, no, no, no." <laughs> you know? Well, the, the, the funniest thing about living in Tokyo is if you and I, I avoid going here, but if you go to Akihabara, 
Yeah. You know a capital? Yeah. Oh god. Yeah. If you go there, it's like it's like the most otaku, you know, anime nerd place in Tokyo. Yeah. And uh, the whole city. I mean, actually, if you want to buy computer parts, that's the base place, best place to go. But yeah. um, you know, uh, but it's a complete mess. Like, if you walk through Akihabara, you would think that Japanese people are having all kinds of sex. But they're not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we know we know from Shinya that they're not. So. Yeah. No, they're not. They're the. I mean, you, there's tits everywhere in Akihabara. They're, I mean, they're just like fucking. I, I mean, there is much more cleavage in fucking Akihabara than any other place in Japan. But see, if, if you're a foreigner and you go to Akihabara, you would think like, oh, Japanese people really love sex. They're not. They're all about it. But that's not the case. Like, Japanese people don't have any sex. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah and that's yeah. the problem. You have a lot of uh, foreigners that that come to Japan, and you get the gaijin chasers. And yeah. Yeah. when I speak, when when people like me and you speak about the real life Jap Japan and about herbivore men, and about how the people in Japan don't want to have sex, and how people are not becoming married and stuff like that, these weeaboo or people who think that Japan is really good. They they live in this little bubble. They don't see right. that, and they really think right. like, no, it's, Japan's not like that. They don't know what they're talking about, and it's because they're looking at it from the other side. They're 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 doing things like going to Akibaha, and they don't think that that yeah that that's not like the real Japan. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. I mean, Akihabara is like a, a micro bubble uh, <clears throat> yeah. of Japanese culture, and they think that that is Japan. It is yeah. just not. No, and that's actually not that area is actually where you find those machines that sell dirty panties. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, and there's yeah, people yeah, there's yeah, people yeah. who think you can I mean, come you can come to Kobe and find the those machines in Kobe. And you can find them all over Japan and stuff like that. They're in like otaku areas, and that's that's only where you find it at. You find it in that yeah. area, you know. <laughs> that's that is so yeah yeah. I I mean yeah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah, but there's so many weeaboos that think they're gonna come here and see the vending machines with all kinds of crazy shit in it. Right. And and you don't. You only if you go to an area where it's like freaky shit you see, that's where you'll find it. You know? Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's crazy. Yeah, weeaboos are funny people, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we'll get a lot of weeaboo hate from, from this video though. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. You get the American manga the American manga society. <laughs> yeah. No, Japan. Japan language is exactly like it is in manga magazines. You don't know what you're talking about, even though you really? live there. I get that all the time. People put on my videos and stuff. You don't know what you're talking about. You know, you're just you just they're living in like they're living in like Minnesota. Yeah, <laughs> and they've never been to Japan. They don't know anything about Japan. I get the same thing because I used to export cars, and you get all these guys in America that talk about skylines and all this stuff. I actually got in an argument the other day because I was watching a video from uh, Motor Trends TV and the guy, the some guy bought a uh, Skyline GTST from Japan mm -hmm. and he had it in, in America and uh, they were doing a test drive and he was the guy was telling him like, I wish it was a six speed. He's like, do you ever wish it was a six speed? And I put in the comment section, I was like, in Japan, normally what we do here in Japan is we take the Spec R Silvia transmission which is a six speed and put it in the GTSTs and we just there's mm -hmm. a there's a, a, a spacer that you can use for the transmission for the bell housing you know to put that transmission wow. onto the skyline you, motor you to yeah there's like a, there's like a little spacer that you that you put on there that you screw on the back of the motor because it was a 20 wow. it's a 20 a 2 liter so it's a you know a, a 20 RB so you put that on there and then from there you can attach the transmission on it and a lot of people do it in Japan so you can get a six speed you know and and some guy got on there and he's like you're lying you don't know what you're talking about and I was like I've actually yeah. I've actually chopped skylines in half 
I've completely dismantled them for parts and I've done this thousands of times and I raced and I drifted and I've done all this stuff in Japan I've built cars my entire life and then you get this like weeaboo fucking you know 21 year old <laughs> that reads Japanese magazines about Japanese cars yeah. or something, and they really think they know what they're talking about, you know? Yeah. And they have no yeah. they have yeah. no idea, <laughs> you know? So that's that's yeah. typically what you end up having having with a lot of the weeaboo culture, like, because it, weeaboo isn't just comic books. It's like everything. Anything yeah. that has to do with Japanese culture, it's they have everything. like a little otaku thing that they like. You know, like some right. of them like manga. Some of them like uh, clothing. Some of them like yeah. uh, like the uh, uh, the uh, Japanese like uh, dress dresses and stuff. You know, yeah. Yeah. things like that. And they yeah. have these little yeah, the little areas that they like, and yeah. they'll yeah. they'll they'll think they know everything about that, like the tea ceremony or something. And they're they're basically <laughs> we they're weeaboos about that. You know, or or they're like, or like, you know, they they they'll explain to you exactly how the samurai sword is made. Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and they actually know nothing about it. The oil it bends because the spine is less, you know, like uh, all this all this nonsense. But uh, but they never actually know anything about like economics, like Japanese economics or po or politics. You know, yeah, like they, they any important shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they don't actually know anything about what they're talking about, really. Because what they do yeah. is they get it from another person who wrote a book that never went right. to Japan either. You know, it's right. like secondhand knowledge, and they're they're talking about something. It's like it's like those old those old things that people do where it's like my brother's brother told me about such and such, and this is how this is true. You know. And it's like it's like that's that's not the case. And when you talk to somebody that's really in Japan, and they tell you how it really is, and then you say, "No, that's not the way I know it to be," that just shows mm -hmm. your ignorance, you know. Because that, and that's also why a lot of Japanese people, especially like in immigration and stuff, they really don't want to bring in weeaboos either, because they weeaboos annoy Japanese people too. Oh yeah. Yeah, and they don't really contribute to the society all that much. Yeah, they want to know why you're here, you know. Exactly. You know, so yeah. like if they think you're like a weeaboo, they kind of want to get you over here, let you teach English a little bit, do your yeah. little manga anime bullshit that you're going to do, and then get the <laughs> fuck out, you know. Right. Basically, that's right. what they want. They want Because a lot of people just want to come here to kind of to, to dick around in the society and kind of go around to yeah. like crazy manga houses and and anime parlors and like the the maid the maid clubs and stupid shit like that yeah. and then they want to go back to america and tell everybody about everything they see exactly they basically there are two types of, of foreigners here there are short term and long term yeah right so like <laughs> people that are here for like six months to a year or whatever uh are much different than people that have been here for five years ten years you know yeah. Um, completely different. Yeah. Uh, it, I, I, I've heard it called gaijin versus gaijin. Mm -hmm. You know, like, we all, we kind of size each other up, you know, yeah. when we see each other. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, sometimes they, sometimes they get this really <laughs> annoying thing that they do. I've seen a lot of foreigners do this, where they, they'll ask you, like, how long have you been here? You yeah, know? yeah. Oh, and, oh, my God, that's the yeah, question. And if you, and if you say... If you say, uh, like, well, I've been here, like, two years or three years, lots of them will, like, not talk to you. Right, right. They're right. like, well, you don't know yeah, nothing yet. They get this, like, yeah. chip on their shoulder, like, well, I've been here 15 yeah. years, you know. Yeah, totally. totally. That kind of yeah. shit. And you're like, dude, fuck off, you know. <laughs> it's like, it's like, man, yeah. it's like, you're. it's so stupid to be so fucking arrogant about yeah, shit totally. like that. And that's how a lot yeah. of them are. A lot of them get that yeah. way. But then you get the opposite thing from the weeaboos. They'll come to Japan for like six months or a year and teach English. And then they'll go back to America and they'll have videos that they put up on the internet talking about Japanese culture. Right. You know, right. like they right. know what right. they're talking about. And then when you get on their video and say, that's not how it is. You don't know what, you don't know what, even what you're talking about. And he's like, I lived it. And then they say like, I lived in Japan. And he's like, yeah, you lived in Japan for a year. 
You know, you don't what know shit. Guy, he, his name was, uh, I think he lived in uh, Sweden or something, and his name was Zeppelin or something like that. Zeppelin in Japan. Have you, have you seen any of those videos? No. Have you done? Have, have you seen any of the Ryan Boundless ones? No. Ryan no, no. Ryan Boundless is is one of the guys that like he's he gets a lot of criticism because he talks like he talks truthfully, and he's but he's one of those kind of guys. He's, it's not only that he's talking truthfully; it's that he's very kind of sullen, and he and he and he seems like he's a very kind of depressed kind of guy. So he oh. the glass is always half empty. He's mm. so everything that he says about Japan is kind of that way. It's like the oh. glass is always half empty, and he's always like, "This is bad about Japan," and he's living here. He lives here. I think he lives in like uh, Osaka somewhere. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah, but if you watch Ryan Boundless's channel, you you'd see mm. like some of the stuff he says. It gets so many Japanese people pissed off. You know. <laughs> You know, I'll and, look it up. Ryan B Boundless. Ryan Boundless. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll look that up later. Yeah, he every so video he, he puts up. Fat. Yeah, every video. Well, every video he puts up, it's like, like uh, the illusion of Japan and all the you know, like stuff oh. like that. It's just he's it's like clickbait. Like the fucking yeah, just the yeah. just the name on the video makes weeaboos want to jump on there and be like, or, or you're like, an asshole. Like you know what you're talking about? Outsell. No baby diapers. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, they, yeah. Yeah. He'll he'll throw shit up like there and he'll talk about like Japanese girls and he'll talk about like working as yeah. an English teacher and he's like, You should never come to Japan. You should never be yeah. an English teacher. You know, all this kind of stuff. Know. Yeah. Like me. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's how I am. And he, he yeah. said he says that stuff and then you get all the people that want to come to Japan and be a weeaboo and teach English and use that to like do all their shit in Japan, and they get pissed yeah. off at him. Yeah, and even other other yeah, J other J vloggers will actually um, watch watch his stuff and get pissed off that he's saying all this stuff. You know, mm -hmm. like Victor, Victor and, and Scott. Oh, God. You know, Scott. <laughs> give, me, give me a flake, man. Yeah, give me a yeah, and Scott a, Scott yeah. Nosaka. You know, Scott. Uh, 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 no, no. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well. Uh, Scott is uh, uh, his his channel's name is Unrested. I haven't seen that. Yeah, if you should watch some of his stuff, he's he's pretty cool too. He's a designer as well. He does he does oh, really? graphics and all that stuff. Oh. Yeah, he's he's really cool. But he always talks about him too about Ryan Boundless because he'll put out a video and somebody will send it to him, and then he'll have to get on and talk about all the stupid shit that Ryan Boundless said. And he'll try to say like that's not true, and this isn't right, and that's not right, blah blah blah, you know. And the way I look at it with with anything in Japan, unless you're talking about a weeaboo, it's kind of like personal, you know. Like yeah. you, like yeah. you've probably spent most of your time that you've lived here in Tokyo. Well, I lived in in Sapporo for a year and a half, and then yeah. I lived in Kanagawa for a year and a half. But um, Tokyo has been about two years. Yeah. So I mean, like, if if somebody was talking to you and they were trying to tell you how life was in Himeji, you wouldn't, you know, you can't, like, right. oh yeah, I've right. been I've been to Himeji, I know what you're talking about, something like that. It's the same thing right. as like somebody trying to tell you how it is in Texas when you've always lived in California your whole life. Exactly. You know, yeah. and that's kind of the thing that you got going on here. Like, I've never actually lived in Tokyo. I've my whole time I've been in Japan, I've lived in Kobe. You know, I I, you know? I would I would advise to you know avoid Tokyo if you can. <laughs> yeah, I know. Me too. I've been I I used to buy cars in auctions online. Yeah. And then I would go to Tokyo and I'd pick the cars up, and I would want to get out of there as quickly as possible. Uh, to Tokyo <laughs> it's is horrible. basically the worst part of Japan. Yeah. It's kind of like. And that's the LA. funniest thing because the weeaboos, that's where they want to go. Yeah, they they yeah, want to go yeah. to Tokyo, and everybody else yeah. in Japan doesn't want to go to Tokyo. Was it crazy right. busy? They like crowded. Oh, oh God! Yeah. It's horrible. Yeah, it's horrible. Trains are horrible. Buses are horrible. There's have you ever seen a billion people where, you get, where the people are being pushed into train cars? Yeah. Oh yeah. That's, that's in Tokyo. Actually, that's actually my life. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's <laughs> in Tokyo. Yeah, you're like, pushed into a freaking that. train car. I actually am one of the people being. Pushed into trains sometimes. Um, you know, like, yeah, yeah, it's horrible. Yeah, it's it's really horrible. Yeah. Yeah. 
and 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 the people in Tokyo are very robotic. Um, they did a they did a special on TV uh, and and on Japanese TV about three months ago, maybe a year ago. I'm not really sure, but um, or they did a test where they walked up to people they didn't know and they did like a bang, you know, like a pistol, like a yeah, like you're shooting them, right? Yeah, right. And then people in Tokyo would, would would be like, huh, like, huh? you know, they'd be just confused. But yeah. they they did the same test in Kansai, which mm-hmm. is uh, Osaka, mm-hmm. you know. And and Osaka in Osaka, people would be like, "Oh, you yeah, shot me. Oh, yeah, no. exactly." And, it, and and it was just, they're more it was, fun. Was, yeah, they're more fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, Tokyo is just very rigid and very robotic and uh, repetitive. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah, and that's the thing. If you if you move to Tokyo as like a weeaboo or something like that. And then you end up staying in Japan, like Canada Gen 3, like the video I just did and got a bunch of hate on. You oh. <laughs> you have this idea that that's how Japan is. And if yeah. you even if you travel around to different places, if you don't actually live there, you can't actually speak to it. You know, it's like it's like me taking a vacation and going to France for a week and then trying to talk about French culture. You right. know, it's just you have no idea what you're talking about. And that's how right. a lot of these people are. They come to Japan yeah. for like a year. They live in one area, and then they go back to their country and they say, "Like I know a bunch about Japanese culture." Right. And it's right. like you know nothing about Japanese culture, right. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can. I understand. Completely. Yeah. I think that's what really gets people mad too. Is like the the videos that I make. I very rarely say anything in my videos decent like nice about japan because i want to i want to throw the truth you know i'm i'm throwing shade everywhere so i i yeah. i talk about the truth about japan and that really gets a lot of people pissed off because they don't want to yeah. they don't want to hear the truth they want to hear the rosy idea of how japan is and that's why when you watch a lot of people's videos um i think i've i've turned scott now the unrested mm. because he's a friend of mine as well i know him and mm-hmm. I've turned him a little bit. He used to do a lot of those kind of rosy glasses 